fact, preaching today is Jesus. That is pretty cool. I don't know. Uh, I don't know about you, but um, you know, as, as Christopher began, hopefully Jesus is speaking to us every time we meet. But there's there's a specific way that we are trying to hear directly from Jesus today. Um, so instead of a, a traditional sermon, uh, we're going to be doing a community Bible reading here on Zoom. Uh, Matthew chapters five, six, and seven, also known as the Sermon on the Mount are going to be read aloud by several different people uh, from our church family here. Now, most of this is going to be read uh, through the voice translation. That might be a translation that's unfamiliar to you, but it's a translation that's specifically written for the purposes of engaging with Scripture uh, by having it read aloud and listened to. You know, most of the early audience or the initial audiences of Scripture primarily would have heard Scripture read aloud and in longer or bigger sections. And so we're going to try and uh, put ourselves in that situation this morning. And it's going to be exciting the way that God meets us. I think he's going to. So I want to encourage you to imagine yourself listening to Jesus outside on a hill. Uh Maybe, you know, if you've ever been to Israel or just think of a think of a great place with a sweeping view, you can put yourself there and and uh, just imagine Jesus speaking to you and speaking to us collectively as a group of people. We'll pause a couple times. We're going to sing, pray a few different times. There'll be some reflective moments Um, and the whole experience is going to be about 30 minutes. Um, And then at the end, we're going to have some breakout groups as well, just to be able to talk through some of uh, how this experience was for you and what you noticed um, as you just listened to this this whole passage and sermon from Jesus. Uh, Now, as you have this experience, just want to mention, you might have a wide range of different experiences with it. You might find yourself having trouble staying focused and being distracted. Uh, You might find yourself being stirred and excited about certain parts and and just, or or something jumps out at you and you find yourself wanting to just think about that and think about how it applies to your life. Or, you know, you you might be taken aback by some of the strong things that Jesus says. Um, You might even have some feelings of shame or condemnation. Uh, My encouragement is not to be too quick to kind of judge your experience or be critical of yourself. Uh, Just be aware of what your experience is as as you're going through this. Uh, For example, sometimes when I come across, uh, even in the Sermon on the Mount, some of Jesus's stronger and more direct words, I can feel some condemnation or shame. Uh, come up. You know, that feeling of like, oh, I'm just not doing it good enough. Uh, you know, and it's helpful, even in this past season, as I've been spending time in the Sermon on the Mount, but you know, it's helpful for me uh, to not be too hard or harsh towards myself in that moment, uh, but rather to just be aware of that. Uh, and, you know, I can, I can then go, you know what, I know that Jesus is not a shaming God. It's not how he operates. He doesn't shame. So I start to realize, wow, that's interesting. I'm bringing some of my shame to Jesus. He's not putting his shame on me. And uh, and that and then I invite the Holy Spirit into that place. Uh, and I allow that to be a place where God meets with me. And uh, so we're going to invite the Holy Spirit. My point is, whatever your experience, be aware of it and invite Jesus to meet you in that place. That, and that might even be a holy rabbit trail <laughs> that something is, is shared in the Sermon on the Mount and you just go, wow, that is what I needed to hear for my life right now. And you might start going down some of That's okay. That's all right. Uh, I, I'm sure that the people, the thousands who heard Jesus uh, out on this hillside with birds chirping and sun shining and and whatever, I'm sure some of them got distracted 
And I believe even in that, the presence of God, he was right there with them. Uh, and he was in that. So we're going to take a moment now to just center our hearts. Uh, I'll, I'm going to say a simple prayer over all of us and over this experience. But I'd like to invite you uh, to do the same. Just maybe it's closing your eyes. Maybe it's, it's leaning back in a relaxed position or opening your arms and your hands. Whatever that is, we're just going to take a moment to center our hearts before the living God who's, who's present with each one of us. So why don't, you, why don't you pray with me and just center your hearts before the Lord. Um, Jesus, you said in, in your word just a few chapters later in Matthew, uh, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you rest. You said, put my yoke or my teaching upon your shoulders. And you know, it might appear heavy at first, but it's perfectly fit. It, it's, it tends to your curves. It's perfect for you, uh, for each of us. And, and then you also said to learn from you because you're gentle and humble of heart. And that when we're yoked to you, that our weary souls will find rest because your yoke is easy and your burden is light. And so Jesus, we just say that you have the floor this morning and we want to hear from you and we want to become more like you as we do. And so it's in your name that we pray, Jesus. Amen. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence living in me. This is my daily bread. This is my daily bread. Your very word spoken to me. And I Now when he saw the crowds, he went up on a mountain, as Moses had done before him, and he sat down, as Jewish teachers of his day usually did. His disciples gathered around him, and he began to teach them. Blessed are the spiritually poor, the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Blessed are those who mourn, who will be comforted. Blessed are the meek and gentle, they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, they will be shown mercy. Blessed are those who are pure in heart, they will see God. 
cholesterol peacemakers. They will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness. The kingdom of heaven is theirs. And blessed are you, blessed are all of you, when people persecute you or denigrate you or despise you or tell lies about you on my account. But when this happens, rejoice, be glad. Remember that God's prophets have been persecuted in the past and know that in heaven, you have a great reward. You beloved are the salt of the earth, but if salt becomes bland and loses its saltiness, can anything make it salty again? No. It is useless. It is tossed out, thrown away, or trampled. And you, beloved, are the light of the world. A city built on a hilltop cannot be hidden. Similarly, it would be silly to light a lamp and then hide it under a bowl. When someone lights a lamp, she puts it on a table or a desk or a chair, and the light illumines the entire house. You are like that illuminating light. Let your light shine everywhere you go, that you may illumine creation, so men and women everywhere may see your good actions, may see creation at its fullest, may see your devotion to me, and may turn and praise your Father in heaven because of it. Do not think that I have come to overturn or do away with the law or the words of our prophets. To the contrary, I have not come to overturn them, but to fulfill them. This, beloved, is the truth. Until heaven and earth disappear, not one letter, not one pen stroke will disappear from the sacred law for everything everything in the sacred law will be fulfilled and accomplished. Anyone who breaks even the smallest, most obscure commandment, not to mention teaches others to do the same, will be called small and obscure in the kingdom of heaven. Those who practice the law and teach others how to live the law will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you this, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven unless your righteousness goes deeper than the Pharisees, even more righteous than the most learned learner of the law. As you know, long ago, God instructed Moses to tell his people, do not murder. Those who murder will be judged and punished. But here's the even harder truth. Anyone who is angry with his brother will be judged for his anger. Anyone who taunts his friend speaks contemptuously toward him or calls him loser or fool or scum will have to answer to the high court. And anyone who calls his brother a fool may find himself in the fires of hell. Therefore, if you are bringing an offering to God and you remember that your brother is angry at you or holds a grudge against you, then leave your gift before the altar. Go to your brother, repent and forgive one another, be reconciled, and then return to the altar to offer your gift to God. If someone sues you, settle things with him quickly. Talk to him as you're walking to court. Otherwise, he may turn matters over to the judge and the judge may turn you over to an officer and you may land in jail. I tell you this, you will not emerge from prison until you have paid your last penny. As you know, long ago, God forbade his people to commit adultery. You may think you have abided by this commandment, walk the straight and narrow, but I tell you this, any man who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery in his heart. If your right eye leads you into sin, gouge it out and throw it in the garbage. For better you lose one part of your body than march your entire body through the gates of sin and into hell. And if your right hand leads you into sin, cut it off and throw it away. 
For better, you lose one part of your body, then march your entire body through the gates of sin and into hell. Remember the scripture that says, whoever divorces his wife, let him legally give her divorce papers and her legal rights. Too many of you are using that as a cover for selfishness and whim, for pretending to be righteous just because you are legal. Please, no more pretending. If you divorce your wife, you're responsible for making her an adulteress, unless she has already made herself that by sexual promiscuity. And if you marry such a divorced adulteress, you're automatically an adulterer yourself. You can't use legal cover to mask a moral failure. You know that God expects us to abide by the oaths we swear and the promises we make. But I tell you this, do not even swear an oath. What is an oath? You cannot say, I swear by heaven, for heaven is not yours to swear by. It is God's throne. And you cannot say, I swear by this good earth, for the earth is not yours to swear by. It is God's footstool. And you cannot say, I swear by the holy city, Jerusalem, for it is not yours to swear by. It is the city of God, the capital of the king of kings. You cannot even say that you swear by your own head, for God has dominion over your hands, your lips, your head. It is he who determines if your hair be straight or curly, white or black. It is he who rules over even this small scrap of creation. You need not swear an oath. Any impulse to do so is of evil. Simply let your yes be yes and let your no be no. You know that Hebrew scripture sets this standard of justice and punishment. Take an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say this, don't fight against the one who is working evil against you. If someone strikes you on the right cheek, you are to turn and offer him your left cheek. If someone connives to get your shirt, give him your jacket as well. If someone forces you to walk with him for a mile, walk with him for two instead. If someone asks you for something, give it to him. If someone wants to borrow something from you, do not turn away. You have been taught to love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you this, love your enemies. Pray for those who torment you and persecute you. In so doing, you become children of your father in heaven. He, after all, loves each of us, good and evil, kind and cruel. He causes the sun to rise and shine on evil and good alike. He causes the rain to water the fields of the righteous and the field of the sinner. It is easy to love those who love you. Even a tax collector can love those who love him. And it is easy to greet your friends. Even outsiders do that but you are called to something higher. You are called to something higher. Be perfect as your father in heaven is perfect. But when you do these righteous acts, do not do them in front of spectators. Don't do them where you can be seen, let alone lauded by others. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. When you give to the poor, do not boast about it, announcing your donations with blaring trumpets, as the play actors do. Do not brazenly give your charity in the synagogues and on the streets. Indeed, do not give at all if you are giving because you want to be praised by your neighbors. Those people who give in order to reap praise have already received the reward. When you give to the needy, do it in secret. Even your left hand should not know what your right hand is doing. Then your father, who sees in secret, will reward you. Likewise, when you pray, do not be as hypocrites who love to pray loudly at synagogue or on street corners. Their concern is to be seen by men. They have already earned their reward. When you pray, go into a private room, close the door, 
and pray unseen to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not go on and on excessively and strangely like the outsiders. They think their verbosity will let them be heard by their deities. Do not be like them. Your prayers do not need to be labored or lengthy or grandiose. For your father knows what you need before you ever ask him. Your prayers, rather, should be simple, like this. Our Father in heaven, let your name remain holy. Bring about your kingdom. Manifest your will here on earth as it is manifest in heaven. Give us each day that day's bread, no more, no less. And forgive us our debts as we forgive those who owe us something. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And let your kingdom be, and let it be powerful and glorious forever. Amen. Jesus, we come before you this morning. We thank you that you are speaking. God, we give ourselves to you this morning. We ask that you would take over. We silence every thought and everything that comes against your word. Lord, as you continue to speak to us this morning, we give ourselves to you, God, and we say that have your way. We silence everything that comes against your word and anything that comes against your promises. We stand on the promises, God, that you are good, that you are faithful, that you are a good father. Lord, help us to release the feelings of control, the feelings of wanting to control, Thank you that nothing comes to you by surprise. Even the emotions that are going through us right now as we listen to your word, God, help us to know that you see us and that you've called us by name for higher things. So God, we release fear, we inhale your confidence, we release doubt, and we inhale your confidence as we continue to listen to your word. If you forgive people when they sin against you, then your father will forgive you when you sin against him and when you sin against your neighbor. But if you do not forgive your neighbor's sins, your father will not forgive your sins. And when you fast, do not look miserable as the actors and hypocrites do when they are fasting. They walk around town putting on airs about their suffering and weakness complaining about how hungry they are, so everyone will know they are fasting. They don't wash or anoint themselves with oil, pink their cheeks, or wear comfortable shoes. Those who show off their piety have already received the reward. When you fast, wash your face and beautify yourself with oil, so no one who looks at you will know about your discipline. Only your father, who is unseen, will see your fast, and your father who sees in secret will reward you. Some people store up treasures in their homes here on earth. This is a short-sighted practice. Don't undertake it. Moths and rust will eat up any treasure you may store here. Thieves may break into your homes and steal your precious trinkets. Instead, put up your treasures in heaven where moths do not attack, where rust does not corrode, and where thieves are barred at the door. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is a lamp of the body. If you, you draw light into your body through your eyes, and light shines out to the world through your eyes. So if your eye is well and shows you what is true, then your whole body will be filled with light. But if your eye is clouded or evil, then your body will be filled with evil and dark clouds. And the darkness that takes over the body of a child of God who has gone astray, that is the deepest, darkest darkness there is. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, you silence fear. Jesus, Jesus, 
You make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. Peace, bring it all to peace. The storm surrounding you, let it break. And your name still, call the sea to still. Rage in me to still every way, and your name, Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus, you silence fear, Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, breathe, call these bones to live, call these lungs to sing once again, I will praise Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble, Jesus, 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 you silence fear, Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus, your name is a light that the shadows can't deny, your name cannot be overcome your name is alive forever lifted high your name cannot be overcome your name is a light that the shadows can't deny your name cannot be overcome. Your name is alive, forever lifted high. Your name cannot be overcome. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, you silence fear, Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble, Jesus, 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 you make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. You silence fear, Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. No one can serve two masters. If you try, you will wind up loving the first master and hating the second or vice versa. People try to serve both God and money, but you can't. You must choose one or the other. Here is the bottom line. Do not worry about your life. Don't worry about what you will eat or what you will drink. Don't worry about how your clothes, how you will clothe your body. Living is about more than merely eating, and the body is about more than dressing up. Look at the birds in the sky. They do not store food for winter. They don't plant gardens. They don't sow or reap. And yet they always feed because they always fed because your heavenly father feeds them. And you are even more precious to him than a beautiful bird. If he looks after them, of course he will look after you. Worrying does not do any good. Who here can claim to add even an hour to his life by worrying? Nor should you worry about clothes. Consider the lilies of the field and how they grow. They do not work 
or weave or sew, and yet their garments are stunning. Even King Solomon, dressed up in regal garb, was not as lovely as these lilies. And think about the grassy fields. The grasses are here now, but they will be dead by winter, and yet God adorns them so radiantly. How much more will he clothe you, you of little faith? You have no trust. So do not consume yourselves with questions. What will I eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? Outsiders make themselves frantic over such questions. They don't realize that your heavenly father knows exactly what you need. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things will be given to you. So don't worry about tomorrow. Let tomorrow worry about itself. Living faithfully is a large enough task for today. If you judge other people, then you will find that you too are being judged. Indeed, you will be judged by the very standards to which you hold other people. Why is it that you see the dust in your brother's or sister's eye, but you can't see what is in your own eye? Don't ignore the wooden plank in your eye while you criticize the speck of sawdust in your brother's eyelashes. That type of criticism and judgment is a sham. Remove the plank from your own eye, and then perhaps you'll be able to see clearly how to help your brother flush out his sawdust. Don't give precious things to dogs. Don't cast your pearls before swine. If you do, the pigs will trample the pearls with their little pig's feet, and then you will turn back, and then they will turn back and attack you. Just ask and it will be given to you. Seek after it and you will find. Continue to knock and the door will be opened for you. All who ask receive. All who ask receive. Those who seek find what they seek. And he who knocks will have the door opened. Think of it this way. If your son asked you for bread, would you give him a stone? Of course not. You would give him a loaf of bread. If your son asked for a fish, would you give him a snake? No, to be sure you would give him a fish, the best fish you could find. So if you who are sinful know how to give your children good gifts, how much more so does your father in heaven, who is perfect, know how to give great gifts to his children? This is what our scriptures come to teach. In everything, in every circumstance, do to others as you would have them do to you. There are two paths before you. You may take only one path. One doorway is narrow and one door is wide. Go through the narrow door for the wide door leads to a wide path and the wide path is broad. The wide broad path is easy and the wide broad easy path has many, many people on it. But the wide broad easy crowded path leads to death. Now then, that the narrow door leads to a narrow road that in turn leads to life. It is hard to find that road. Not many people manage it. Faithful you are. Faithful forever you will be faithful you are and all your promises are yes and amen and all your promises 
Along the way, watch out for false prophets. They will come to you in sheep's clothing, but underneath that quaint and innocent wool, they are hungry wolves. But you will recognize them by their fruits. You don't find sweet, delicious grapes growing on thorny bushes, do you? You don't find delectable figs growing in the midst of prickly thistles. People and their lives are like trees. Good trees bear beautiful, tasty fruit, but bad trees bear ugly, bitter fruit. A good tree cannot bear ugly, bitter fruit, nor can a bad tree bear fruit that is beautiful and tasty. And what happens to the rotten trees? They are cut down. They are used for firewood. When a prophet comes to you, and preaches this or that. Look for his fruits, sweet or sour, rotten or ripe. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Simply calling me Lord will not be enough. Only those who do the will of my Father who is in heaven will join me in heaven. At the end of time, on that day of judgment, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not drive demons out of the possessed in your name? Did we not perform miracles in your name? But I will say to them, I never knew you. And now you must get away from me, you evildoers. Those people who are listening to me, those people who hear what I say and live according to my teachings, you are like a wise man who built his house on a rock, on a firm foundation. When storms hit, rain pounded down and waters rose, levees broke and winds beat all the walls of that house. But the house did not fall because it was built upon rock. Those of you who are listening and do not hear, you are like a fool who builds a house on sand. When a storm comes to his house, what will happen? The rain will fall, the waters will rise, the wind will blow, and his house will collapse with a great crash. With that, Jesus finished his teaching, and the crowds were amazed by all he had said. But Jesus taught in his own name, on his own authority, not like the scribes. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust you, how I proved you or endure. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust you. Amen. We are going to go to uh, breakout rooms now and just talk about what struck you in that. Uh, there were a lot of moments that were very vivid for me as I was uh, listening. So each one of the readers is going to be in a different breakout uh, room and all you have to do is just say yes to that. We'll be in those rooms for about eight-ish minutes and just give everybody a chance to share 
the, the, the basic prompt is, what was it like to hear directly from Jesus rather than having it uh, preached through somebody else? And then uh, what was it that really highlighted for you? What kind of jumped out at you as you were listening? And we'll just share that. And uh, we will come back into the main room for a, a final closing moment, unless your breakout room just goes to town, in which case you're welcome to, to stay. Welcome back to room. the to the main area. Hope you had a good time in your um, breakout groups. It was such a special um, privilege to, to gather around the mount together to hear Jesus from all the voices of our body, each portraying a different um, yeah, aspect of the heart of God. I feel like each voice brings a, a different, um, um, yeah beautiful representation of him. So uh, I just wanted to um, officially welcome baby Joshua Tak, G baby Joshua Jihoon Tak, um, born this past uh, oh, Tuesday, last Tuesday to uh, Eric and Jenny Tak. So we, we just um, celebrate this new addition to your family and uh, just congratulations. Um, Okay, I know people are kind of still in their breakup, but we'd love to just close this portion officially and then um, release you or you can st stay around to, to chat. But um, Jesus, thank you so much for, um, wow, just a special time of gathering around you or to hear your words um, just spoken through um, your people, your beloved children. Thank you so much for calling us to a life um, to follow you. Jesus, thank you that you preach a message that um, you don't just say, but you lived out yourself first. Thank you, Lord, that um, the high calling is one that uh, we cannot do on our own strength, but is one that you empower us, you invite us to, and um, you, um, you say not to worry because you are trustworthy. Lord, you call us to love our enemies because you have done that first. And um, Lord, I just thank you for just the high honor um, to be invited, and we just ask, yes, your kingdom come and your will be done on, F on earth as it is in heaven. I just pray blessing over my brothers and sisters as they go, and um, would they just um, revel, God, in the identity that you call them as your sons and daughters, uh, beloved uh, by you. In Jesus' name, amen.